profit is not exploitation. Despite the media neo-Marxists pushing their agenda that capitalism is a cancer and that profit is greedy exploitation by the rich, this isn't all true. First of all, what is profit? Profit is when the revenue, which is the income generated by a business or company by doing a certain activity, exceeds the cost and expenses at creating and sustaining that activity. When you have an idea for something, it doesn't just pop out of nothing, right? In order to begin a process for creating virtually anything, you need certain things to be able to do this. For example, in order to build desks, you need wood, metal, glue, a saw, and various other materials. You obviously need to get these materials from somewhere, meaning you either have to buy or manually gather them. For both scenarios, you need to work for the materials. Either you directly make or collect them from Mother Earth, or you work at a job to accumulate money to purchase the resources. Not only do you need these resources, you also need labor, meaning you have to put in work to build desks, but you also have to spend time, which, which you could crucially be doing something else, such as working to sustain yourself. In order to create anything, you need to sacrifice certain things such as tangible materials, labor, and time. If you choose to create desks, you are missing out on the possibility of getting a job and working as a construction worker during this time. This is called an opportunity cost, in which the potential benefits are missed out uh, are missed out when choosing one alternative over the other. <clears throat> Such as choosing to build desks rather than working as a construction worker. Since you are sacrificing wealth and time to create a certain product, in this case desks, you can lose more than what you gain by starting a business. If your desks are expensive to make, you need to charge a lot of money for them. This is because you want your revenue generated by selling the desk to be higher than your costs. Due to the law of demand, higher priced goods or services are of less value to people than lower priced goods or services in a similar field. If you price your desks higher than, mo than most other desks of the same or even superior quality, very few would wish to buy your desks, meaning there will be a low demand for them. Maintaining your business becomes a loss. Your expenses exceed the profit you generate by selling desks, meaning you have a deficit, which is the opposite of a, sur of a profit or surplus. Thus, in order to avoid upholding a failed project, you cease running your business. This is how the majority of businesses end, in failure. However, if you manage to more efficiently purchase resources, build the desk in, sh in shorter periods of time, and you make the desk more sturdy with less costs, you can charge less for them. If you have less expenses, you can charge less as well while maintaining the same profit margin. However, unlike before, you price your desks lower. This means that you have managed to create a desk that is of superior quality and costs less, meaning more people will value it more. Going back to the law of demand, these desks which are at a lower price than other similarly created desks are very valuable to a lot more people. Many people begin to purchase your desk seeing how good of a deal it is. After a year, your income generated by selling your handmade desks are higher than your expenses to create the desks. You have made a profit. Now, let's just say using your profit, you want to hire people to help you make more desks in a shorter period of time. Your employees sign a contract of you agreeing to make desks, whereas you pay them a specific wage. Now that you have hired people, you can reduce the cost of each desk as your business will be making more of them. While for each desk you will be making a lower profit margin, your business makes four times the amount of desks, meaning you will be making more total profit. However, isn't using people's labor to generate a surplus exploitation? Well, this is a very common objection made by a lot of people, especially the ones who believe in Marx and economics. This is not at all correct. First of all, the act of hiring a person is voluntary as, sh as he or she agreed to work for you and they have agreed to sign a contract which determines what they do along with their wage. They have voluntarily agreed to work with you. No coercion or force was used because both sides benefit from the arrangement. You get the labor you used while saving time to manage the business and your employee gets a job and a wage which they use to purchase the goods or services they need or want. According to the subjective theory of value, various individuals prefer different things compared to others. You, the employer, prefers the work of your employee than the money you will be losing, paying the employee. Your employee, on the other hand, prefers the wage than the time and hard work they have to put up with for around 8 hours, working for you, or so. 
Another common claim made by the believers of the labor theory of value is that workers should manage their own businesses and its output, or as they all call it, the means of production. These individuals claim that the entrepreneur only exists to oppress the worker and exploit them by forcing them to work more for only the benefit of the entrepreneur. The main argument against this is that the business was indeed created by the entrepreneur. The main reason that the worker even has the job is due to the entrepreneur create, creating it. Without the entrepreneur, not only would the business not exist, but the worker would have less opportunities to find the job given that your job doesn't exist and that's one less job in the market. The worker does not have a right to something that they did not create. The wealth of the business is determined by the entrepreneur's decisions, not the workers. The workers did not create the product or service the business, the business is selling. They are not managing or sustaining the business, and they are relatively unaffected if the business collapses. They can simply find a new job. It is utterly ridiculous and deplorable to think that people have a right to wealth of something that they did not even create, manage, or sustain. They only deserve the wage that was voluntarily agreed upon them and their employer by doing a certain task for the, the business. Running a certain business is not only beneficial, running a successful business is not only beneficial to yourself, but every other individual in the society. Not only do you innovate and create a better product at a lower cost, making it more accessible and superior for everyone, you also do this while creating jobs for other people to work in and receive the wages they need to survive and thrive. The profit you make is a reward for successful entrepreneurship. It is proof that economy is not a zero-sum game, that greater efficiency in production leads to the improvement of society. Entrepreneurship leads to the creation of new, better working conditions and more livable wages, and the increase of quantity and quality of consumer products, which improves which leads to the improvement of living standards. On the contrary, a plant or controlled economy doesn't allow the individual any freedom to pursue his self-interests. It prohibits any kind of innovation, private property ownership, and the voluntary exchange and accumulation of wealth. A planned economy allows us to take full control to do as they please with the individual, and anything the state sees as a threat is banned. Whereas market economies have a hierarchy of hard work, innovation, and merit, the centrally planned economies of socialism have a hierarchy of how much you can exploit, steal, abuse, and destroy the individual's life to benefit only the lives of a few state officials. In socialism, full power and authority is held by the few, and the rest are forced to obey them without question. The 99% live with mostly only their basic needs under socialism, and they cannot change their lives in any way. There is no economic mobility or social mobility in the society, or at least very little. They are forced to live in the most miserable conditions possible, technically alive and healthy, but they, they are enslaved to a system which only keeps them around for the empowerment of these state individuals. If you don't do anything that doesn't directly benefit the state, you are, long, you are no longer necessary and will be removed in some way from the society. So... In conclusion, do not believe the lies and embrace the truth. Profit is not exploitation, but letting the state have the control over the economy is indeed exploitation. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.